not get done today, but with, with you, and, uh, I mean, a great comedian, a great performer is yeah, such we a starting, rare thing. If we were starting, Elizabeth, that's very nice of you to say, but if we were starting, they wouldn't know anything about me, and they wouldn't care. And they wouldn't know what we were planning, and they All just they'd have the to do is jolly about one close-up of that of one of those famous Count Five takes. Well, There's nobody I in the world that, that can you. do that. <laughs> Thank Excuse you. Excuse me, but you would make the same success now if you started today. Do you really in think my so? Opinion, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, because I you, what you say, is a criticism of the people of today, and the people haven't changed. The people would like a good comedy, or do like a good comedy today. Just that they liked it. I, for instance, last Sunday in New York, I saw a play called I Love My Wife, a small musical. And it is charming. It's a good comedy. It, it could have been, been done uh, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, and it's a big success today. I read the good reviews on it. Do you think it'll make it? Yes, definitely. Oh. I agree with them, Lucy. That, God, uh, I, wish you, I hope you're right. Definitely. That, uh, I Love Lucy would make so it instead in any of doing era. all the three runs, do something new. Well, the reason I'm so pleased that you said that, and thank you a little bit. And if you have a small part for me, I can put on <laughs> a big. You're be such there. a ham. <laughs> now remember, you said that because I'm going to take you up on it. I put on a little wig. Uh, I have done two or three specials uh, since uh, I stopped my usual weekly show, and they haven't been that well received. They, it was sort of like this, you know, and they kept uh, the letters come in. Why You're don't spoiled. you just do? Uh, like you and Gail did, and you and Vivian did, and, uh, and whatnot. And I've always kind of prided myself in knowing when to get off, and I thought, my God, I just can't be screamed at by Uncle Harry anymore for my idiotic things. I got a little embarrassed at my age. And yet, I get the letters, do it, do it, please go back, please go back. And I say, what's the matter? You got enough reruns to look at. But now they want me to do an hour or two hours of it. Do it. Otto. Don't if you, you like can find the, the same writers... I feel writer. sorry I, for my writers trying to find new ideas. If you could find the same writers whom you've always been most generous in praising... I know where they are. You've always praised them as the ones who made yes, the show go. Yes, but my goodness, they're, 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 they're running out of ideas, too. Talking about writing, David Mamet, as we explained, is one of the best of the new young people in the theater today. I've been eyeing him. And he, his show, while praised by the critics on Broadway, tremendous praise, one of them, Clyde Barnes, says it is the foulest mouth show he's seen. Oh, now, well, he doesn't get to the theater much, Cut. But there is language that you know. You, is you, that backstage or on stage? <laughs> Both. <laughs> but you know that the foul language in your show is very predominant. I wonder, do you want to justify that or explain it or why it's necessary in view of what Lucy stands for? Um, I think there's good and bad in all races. No? Wait a second. What's the show about? <laughs> First. It's, about, it's about thieves. May I say something? Yeah. I haven't seen the show, but if the people, if the characters that he puts on the stage use this language, why shouldn't he use it? Why should, but, 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 but I mean, you're not doing a play for little children. I don't think, I mean, all this nonsense, I mean, our society today, you use language like this everywhere. That doesn't mean that a clean show with Lucille Ball couldn't be the biggest success, and that doesn't mean that, that he should not write a play where the people speak like these characters speak. I, you took the words out of David's mouth. Am I right? I've seen sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, talking about, uh, I grew up watching your shows, as everyone in my I generation so. did. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. And um, so, how the, come you wrote what you wrote? <laughs> because he loved the show, but he doesn't want to imitate your show. The no, wonderful thing is, about, I was just thinking about this today. Look at the shows that you did, and, and the answer to the question, would they go today? I think the, the, to look backwards, it's exactly the same kind of theater that you're going to find in Plautus, you know, or in Aristophanes, or, or in the comedy. It's a, the, the, the situations, the plot, the character that, you've, uh, that, that you created, and the kind of television that you did is, is uh, timeless. Yes, it goes right. back, as, it's, it's theatrical. And I think that's why it would be viable today. You know, I think perhaps uh, what I was instantly thinking when I get asked that question, and I've asked, been asked a lot recently, I think I was thinking of the network people, the buyers. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. uh, I think we are now speaking of the public, right. uh, which we have a right to. And, uh, but the buyers, <laughs> they hedge a little because they know what, uh, you know, they, yeah. they, they think in a little different vein. That's, yeah. that's my uh, big 
I, I, he said, if I was just taking it for the first time sure. to, uh, say, Freddie Silverman. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that's where all the humanity goes out of the interchange. We are no longer dealing with what you think, but what you think someone else might think. Well, I've, uh, what, I've, I've been with that for, for a great many years. Yeah. I've had to deal with these people. I think you underrate Freddie Silverman. Really? If you gave him a good comedy like you used to make them, and this you, he would be the first one to buy it. He was the first one to fire me. <laughs> really? He did, oh. he did fire you? He wanted to. He, uh, uh, he wanted to get rid of the oldies, Jack Benny and myself. Let me explain for the public oh, who may not know who that. Freddie Silverman is. He formerly was with CBS. This was the period that he was, Lucy's talking about. He's now the head of programming for ABC. He's a very bright man, and, but... He's Otto, you've played a very important role in all this. Now, when you had a Moon is Blue, and then later you had the other show, uh, uh, Man with the Golden Arm. The Man with the Golden Arm. Both of those violated all the so-called standards of the day. You fought censorship. You fought courts. You fought your own uh, industry. Yet you put them on, and you opened the door for a lot of things that today we see on the screen. Well, you say you opened the door. I think what I did has nothing to do with show business. I just felt... See, I, I wasn't born here, and I was very proud to be an American citizen. And I felt that one of the advantages of being an American is that you have freedom of expression. And this is very precious. No totalitarian government, whether it is the Nazis or the Russians, fascists or communists, can exist with a people who speak their mind. They all need censorship. This is why I think that whether you are a writer or a filmmaker or whatever you are, that you must fight censorship in your area. Otherwise, it'll all, we will all become slaves. And that's why I'm against censorship. And as far as all this nonsense about violence is concerned, if the people don't want to see violence on television, it's very simple. They can turn off their, 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 their sets. But they don't, Otto. But, they, but if the people want to see it, then they have a right to see well, it. Well, the erotic are a captive audience when it's on five out of six, seven stations. Well, don't you think, though, that the industry, whether it's motion pictures or television, has some uh, obligation not to cater to the lowest element of our uh, society? But the lowest element? You think the 75% of the American public are the lowest element? People they're who, all uh, turning into a certain a violent show, yes. No. Yes. They have the right to see what they, they want. They have the right, but that's not the answer to the question. Uh, we, I mean, the, we, we see the lines, look, we see the I, lines outside of porno theaters, and we see a, 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 a nice family picture with three people going into the see, theater. May, may I give you two examples? You Number give one, me 82. I have never <laughs> made a, a violent picture. I hate violence. And I have Except never in made, your private life. I have never... <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Otto. Here we go. All right. Otto. All right, let's drink go ahead, to that. Otto. I'll, I'll drink to that. And then let's skip no, it. Don't no, even bother no, to answer no, it, Otto. No. <laughs> but you see. Your answer's too long. But go ahead. our whole society has changed. It is much more outspoken. And I don't think it is bad, you know. When, when, when I grew up in Vienna, you couldn't say the word sex in front of a lady, you know. You couldn't say venereal disease. You called it, you called it a, a, a social disease. Really? I don't, why and you're now, on that subject? I can say it here on television, on your shows. It certainly is not a no. dirty show. While you're on the subject, he has a commercial that fits it. No, we don't have commercials oh. here, Lucy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I don't know why you're on that subject. Yeah. Recite the words that cause so much furor with the moon is blue that you had to go to court over it. Well, the words were virgin, yeah. uh, 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 pregnant, and seduced. Oh. Yeah. Now you know what order the water. Can you <laughs> <laughs> That's what that I order. always say. When, you, ver I when to... you seduce a virgin, she becomes pregnant. I, was, I, had, a, I had a big thing because I, I was pregnant on television. First, right. uh, I was a pioneer in that, we'll say. <laughs> <laughs> but do you really, really think it was a better world then because people no. were not No, but the apathy that has set in with all of us, uh, the, the things, well, not we apathy. are more tolerant. Now we're getting but used it's to... It's not apathy. Being tolerant is very good. It's, I don't think it's apathy. I read this wonderful book the other day by another Chicagoan, Bruno Bettelheim, and it's called The Uses of Enchantment about Fairy Tales. And he says in the Hindu cultures, when people will become severely disturbed, when they have an, an emotional breakdown, 
what the what the doctors would do would be to tell them fairy stories with violence no to try to to try to say something to this person who lost all contact with reality on such a basic level that the person would be soothed and i think that that's i think that's what violence on television is is that that, uh, that emotionally that is our consciousness as a country is so upset that we we like being told fairy stories which is what these things are what, what is what what things that's are what we're seeing is. reality no it's not reality no no lucy it's not reality but what the violence is is a fairy tale and the fairy tale is there's violence in reality of all course, around but, but, us and but, we're now making it called we're calling it entertainment no no i'm i'm not in favor of violence on television quite the contrary what well, I'm a lot is, of shooting and stabbing they, they, they and blood and people eating no, by sharks. No, what I'm saying is that it's what I'm saying is that I think what causes it is our need for a and, and I'm and I'm saying that people on television should take the bull by the horns and stop producing it. But I think the reason people find it acceptable is because it tells them that it tells them that though the society appears to be violent, good will triumph in the end, and all the bad people will become killed, which is untrue, of course. But that's what they, that's why they that's why they watch a violent television show. Well, not a, but 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 you see, they're glamorizing a star. Absolutely. The star of that show becomes glamorized because you can't take the Absolute. ham out of that's any of I'm, us. That's what I'm saying. So he it's, looks like a good guy, no matter how many people he's killed. No, or but she. He, no, no, but they get killed in the end. The, not necessarily. The good Clint Eastwood's still living, Donnie. and I love him. <laughs> yeah, but he Donnie, plays. A, have he you plays ever read the plays by Shakespeare? Is there any so. place? Oh, I, I agree. And more violence than in Shakespeare. I agree. I, well, they had to live through that. Shakespeare we have was to live just through as there. violent as television. Well, essentially there. what we're doing, though, is, is, is discussing something that, that's a, a qualitative judgment. And I think that a lot of the, the television violence is simply, I think people watch it because it's very fast moving. It's action, right? It's fast. And we have grown up visually oriented to those images, to the moving, to the fast. This, and essentially it's a cheap thrill. And I don't know a quicker way to get people off of cheap thrills than to give them a better thrill. And I think what television doesn't do is go for the better thrill. Well, what is the I think the it settles thrill? for the cheap. I think... Sex. I think your shows were a better thrill. I think The Honeymooners with Art Mary Carney. I think Mary Tyler Moore was a better thrill yeah. because there, were, there was something to them. So essentially what's lacking is some kind of substance. It is not the violence or the sex per se. It is that it's out of context. It's put into into a form where it's exploitive. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's for its own sake. And that's what we object to. That's yeah. what shall there is no substance, there's no reason, it. there's no moral. No, then turn it off. Yeah, but what well, do you turn point to? You because, turn to the uh, daily news. It's the same thing no, you just were looking no, at. May I tell but you Liz one makes a good more point thing. out of I me. think that television follows the pattern of movies. And in ten or fifteen years we will have independent television producers like we have Mostly independent movie producers. Today. Fine, but the and written then word then comes first. Let's start yeah, with the exactly, books. Exactly, exactly. Right. Is that not what is the hardest thing? Now, I don't know, but you would know. Is that not the hardest thing what? to find in television? The writers, the yeah, written well, the writers. Writers. No, 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 it's the no, no, no. There are lots of good writers who would die yeah. to work. But they don't, they don't no, hire them for television. No, well, and, and, and well, what, the problem is, the problem is that the hardest thing, the hardest thing to it's incredibly difficult to write something when you're not getting supported. Right. And, and now, oh. wait a second. And what happens in television, and you find this at the agencies, and you find this at, at the producers, and you find this in the directors, is I would like this, but I can't sell it. Right. That's just what I said. Right. So what you have to get is some. You have to get that somebody little, with a little bit of because a movie you can make the damn movie and you, whether you find the distributor or not you have the movie there right but you can't make the the television show if and you're you not going to get out will be able there. soon that's what i was just saying oh, right. you with the we have gone many full many yet. years we until the, full until, until the movie we all have to follow uh, no, but it's different can. because uh, the question uh, is who the control, in, no here, the, here. when i came to hollywood there was not one independent producer except david selstein because he was the 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 son in law of louis b mayer and therefore he could get distribution by metro and well, now they are mostly independent producers well, because the, the government changed it you know now yeah. they are that doesn't mean their pictures are making money out of but it's not a question yeah. the picture that well, you that's got to happen in television the picture the about the jobs give us that you mentioned yeah. before is making more money well, than course. any picture has right. ever made in the whole history what is, what is? Jaws. Jaws. and i don't even know why i mean i don't think it's such a good picture but it is a fairly good picture that people want to see that that is what you make entertainment for. Would you have this show if people wouldn't look at it? People are foolish. Let's they want, to hear, to, us. They like they want to hear us five people talk. 
Well, let's go back that's to where they like Jaws. That's too much violence. That's too much blood and stuff that we but didn't have to look at. And that's because that's they're the bored. They took that's, a species no, no. of fish that isn't that dangerous. That's the same. It's the same idea, Lucy. It's the same fairy tale that I'm. The, the, it's a projection of. Uh, uh, it's a projection of hate. People say I. It's not that I hate other people. So other people hate me, and the hate is so violent and so vicious, and so it's even devoid of reason. It's an unreasoning animal that's out there yeah. waiting to eat yeah. me up. Yeah. But in the end. I'm going to triumph over it, and that's the fairy tale. Well, the, tells in us. the end, that's where the long box office line is, and that's what we're talking about today, where the money is or why we can't sell a certain type of show and why other types of shows are being sold, and we're getting more tolerant to this type of thing, and our young people are lining up uh, at the wrong theaters, How I think. How can a woman with <laughs> your success be so bitter? I'm not bitter. That I don't understand. I'm not bitter, not bitter. She's outspoken, I'm well, not bitter, darling, at all. I'm very every grateful word for what I said have. here is bitter. Oh, you're Bitter, full yes. of it. Bullshit, <laughs> Otto. What? <laughs> that yeah. girl lives. I wouldn't say that to, to her, that she speaks bullshit. No, no I'm you saying that's what be, you're must talking. Be much I'm not more, talking You must be a little polite to her. No, no. She's older I, 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 I am not at all bitter. We were, no, we're I don't think she's bitter, but I, I also don't think she's polite. I said you go further. You say bullshit. <laughs> I don't, I'm terrible? not at all bitter. I have nothing to be bitter about. And I've had nothing but success. Then you come, <laughs> that's right. I'm just saying it's There's too nothing bad. nothing but success and you speak bitter. No, I'm not. Just no, no, let me, no, no. Let me ask Lucy a question here, because when you say you've had nothing but success, you have been quoted as saying that your success was one of the biggest flukes in show business. Yes. Now, everybody at this table knows you have great talent. You've proved yourself over the years. And you deserve what, your success. What do you mean that your success was a fluke? It happened as a fluke. I, I'm very grateful for it and, and very knowledgeable of how it happened, but it was a fluke. Uh, it's just that I wanted to get out of pictures and stay home so I could have children. And Desi was traveling. It's a fluke. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. It's another word for it. <laughs> and, uh, but he was traveling, and I was, you know, we were, and you can't do it long distance. So I said, well, if we're going to ever have children, because he'd been in the Army four years, and we, you know, we'd been on the road five years, and we'd been married nine and a half years, and we'd been together half a year. So we just stayed home, and the television happened to come along. CBS wanted me to get into it. And TV was uh, the greatest success for me. That's what I call, that's what I mean by the fluke, because I'd uh -huh. been in pictures, and I had never done that, anything that great in pictures. I enjoyed it because I learned the business. But television was marvelous. Then the intimacy we all found out about, uh, you know, took about a year or so. We realized that people were very close to you, and and thought they really knew you and they wanted to touch you and it was a whole new thing and I loved being typed and all that but it was a fluke how we got into it you know it wasn't something we just planned we planned for a year to stay home so that I could have a baby I think while you're talking about Desi your former husband is very touching that in his book he says I still love Lucy and he meant you personally not the series thank you it was very nice, very touching little We've always been here. very friendly. Everybody, yeah. we've never had, we only had one lawyer when we got a divorce. There, there's no animosity. It's, nice. uh, it's enough for people to go through without that. Yeah. Otto, I read your book with great delight. It's a very fascinating book, but you left out so many good parts about your stories. And Why if, didn't you include more? If you of sell enough books, I will you write, a, uh, write a second, yeah, a second body. Very good. One point you make in the book is that the fear of most actresses is growing old. Whereas yeah. men don't have that problem, you found out that the I women I said that you it do. is easier for a man, being an actor, to accept growing older than for a woman. You know, particularly if the woman makes the success as a leading lady, you know, early, and that was always the case, it is less now than then because we are much more reasonable now. You see, I, unlike most here at this table, think that we have progressed in everything, in films, in television, I think that everything is developing very well. And I do, I don't like violence. I've never met, made a violent film, but I think the best uh, cure for that is not to look at it. And not uh, to demand that it shouldn't be shown because we cannot afford to have, uh, have censorship. We just can't. Let me go back to the original question. I asked Liz, who's a comparatively young lady, uh, do you have a fear of growing old? Uh, not yet. Not she, anymore. She's no, too young. No, no, no. I'm looking 40 in the face. I mean, I'm 37. I'll be 38 in August. And um, I mean, I I was like, you know, sort of like became successful when I was very young, and then retired for like six years from like 
From the time I was 25 to when I was 30, which is supposed to be the years when you really consolidate your career. What did you do? Career. I, uh, I stayed home and became a Beverly Hills housewife. And my career nice. was shopping and lunch. Similar to you. Which uh, drove me crazy. But so I was 30 years old and I had a baby and I wouldn't take alimony and I was getting divorced. So I had to go back to work and the only thing anybody had ever paid me any money for was performing. And it was, uh, I mean, and they counted me down, dead, out, over with, it's all over. And I, I knew that I would have to take any job that came along and that's a very humbling experience. And I think probably one of the reasons I've been working on the stage, I, have, I didn't do it with a plan, I've never been any good with a plan, but I think one of the reasons for about the past three years I've been working on the stage a lot, aside from the fact that I get to play better things, I get more interesting parts, I get to do what I want to do more or less, um, is also the, the age thing. In other words, it it's really gets on my nerves more and more and more if I do a film or a television thing and I'm supposed to be 25. I'm not 25, well, you know, and, and I hate that pressure. I mean, I really like to play my own age. I mean, and I can, I mean, I'm, you know, you know the play because Lucy's daughter, Lucy, did the play that I'm doing now in Los Angeles. I mean, and there we are. Uh, I'm a 37-year-old woman, put on my cheerleading suit and my pom-poms and going out there and jumping around. I'm somebody's mother. And the stage you can be 40 and still play 25. But you can do it. Because but of the distance. To a degree, although easier. emotionally, I think you when skipped you... over something that's a very interesting facet in all your lives. Eh? The amount of lousy crap, I think you called it, shows and movies that you had to do at one stage in your career just to survive. Look, I, for me, I figure it's a one out of ten. Nine gigs out of the gigs that I do are going to be paying my mortgage, paying for my car, and sort of coppering my bet against my real old age, right? And maybe one out of ten, I demand one out of ten for me to fill me up it's going to do that I, where i'm going to get off it's going to be terrific and wonderful and it's going to be for me and that fills me up enough so that then i can go and give something or bring something or make better the other stuff that i have to do that pays the rent but you did a lot of, a lot of lousy uh, movies at oh, one time just to work. after after i after i'd been quit for like five years and i started working and you have to do the guest shots on the episodic thing and and it's just, uh, it's, it's pretty terrible. I mean, you really look at a lot of that stuff and think, when how you, am I going to wrap my mouth around this? When you use the words during your so-called retirement, that it almost drove you crazy. That was almost true, wasn't it? What? You said you almost drove you crazy doing nothing. Didn't you uh, go to the, you talk about being in an asylum for a period of time? Because oh, well, no, they, 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 they packed me up and sent me off to the, to the, uh, the happy farm before I retired. That was probably one of the reasons that I retired. That was your own idea. I remember that. You wanted that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I was a 23-year-old actress, and what you're supposed to have is a nervous breakdown. You wanted to go back to the womb and rest. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is that true? Sure. A few minutes ago, they all said the word is where it all starts, David. You're the master. Everybody here depends on the written word, all the performers. And you once were quoted as saying you feel like you're manipulating human beings when you sit down. You're a powerhouse when you're writing. Oh yeah, no, it's, not, it's not manipulating human beings; it's manipulating ideas, which is that's that's the fun part. Yeah. Like Orson Welles is quoted as saying when he came to Hollywood that it's the biggest toy in the whole world. I mean, that's so when you when writing is really fun, you know. I mean, it's it's even it's not bounded by anything except the greatest ideas. Greatest creation. Oh, right? it's wonderful. You don't even have to think about how it's going to how it's going to come out on the stage or how it's going to come out in the film. We have to deal with that later. We just move around ideas like a puzzle. You said Great you're fun. a method writer. What does that mean? Yes, what does that mean? Oh, a method know. writer? I think I said that jokingly. Did you? Yeah, but... Uh, oh, that was... gets him out of an answer. <laughs> oh, no, I'll answer it, though. You said uh, you're a Stanislavski method writer. Oh, yeah. Uh, that everything I, I learned about writing, I learned from studying acting. Which... Well, well, but, but even so, what is a method writer? Well, I mean, like your method acting. Well, I try well, to write... that's what he's trying to cop out with. I still I try to write in terms of. I try to write in terms of actions. That is, I try to write in terms of things that people can do behavior. on the stage. Oh. Yeah, but even more specific than behavior, a actions. Like something as simple as picking up a pad of paper or saying, saying goodbye to your mother. Nothing that's more complex than that. And the reason I learned to do that is because I learned that an actor can't do anything more complex than that. But everything an actor has to do on one level has to come down to something as simple as that. Because you can only do one thing at a time. You look insulted. Yeah. No, 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 not Would at all. I'm just perplexed. trying to understand. Perplexed. Would you take a part if somebody offered you a part and play it? I might. I might. 
What do you got? I think he's first in acting. We'll discuss it after the show. It's a deal. Honestly, Otto, you got good an type, idea good for him? Good type, good no, type. Not honestly. Just <laughs> good type. You also said, David, that the women's movement turned your head around. You hadn't written much about yeah. women in your earlier That's career. Right. As well as in fact, what? women were conspicuous by their absence in everything you wrote. Right. And the women's liberation movement did yeah. bring you, make you more conscious of Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's like what Elizabeth just said. Why should she have to play a 25-year-old when she's 37? It's an effect I'm she, much more interesting now than I was when I was 25. Yeah. It's, 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 she's, she's saying why should... This, that, what a terrible thing society's placing a tax on her, saying these last 12 years years didn't exist. I'm sorry. Punch out and go home. And the same thing was about writing for women. You know, why deny that that occurred to me one day after everyone had asked yes, me about it. But if you write the part, yes. and the part is 25 years old, well, yeah. and she wants to play it, then yeah. in spite of her real age, she must, must play 25. You wouldn't want her to rewrite your part so it would fit her. No, but, she's, but I think she's, talk, she's mm -hmm. talking about an epidemic, about saying that, that women past the first blush of sexuality and before the stamp of approval of motherhood has been put on them. If they aren't married, they don't exist. You really believe that? No, no, no. Quite Do the contrary. Do you really believe that? Um, no, but I think that it was sort of a cultural habit. It was a cultural assumption for a long time that I think has gotten I broken don't know down where by I lived. a lot. I didn't see any Well, of it was true of some women that depended uh, years and years ago on their glamour and, and uh, that I sort of that went out about 20 some years ago with the the vamp uh, the vamps and the uh, beautiful and there, we haven't been uh, uh, Farrah what's her name Farrah Fawcett Majors what's mm -hmm. her name Farrah Fawcett, Fawcett Majors I mean Very she's good. in that same basket right now and she's probably going to have trouble with it if she would consider it trouble but I don't think she would I think she's smart enough not to let it bother her uh, Marilyn Monroe, uh, who were the great beauties in the last... Uh, Lana Turner? Lana, well, yeah, she was certainly a great beauty, but I don't think it ever bothered her. Well, I don't know, maybe it did Vivian Lee. Allo, in his book, talks about women. He says only two types of women survived in Hollywood. May I quote you? Well, yes, please. One are those who are dominated by men, and the other group are those who behave like men. Yeah. I think that, that the successful Hollywood actresses, very many of them behaved like men. They would choose a man, like a man, you know, just to have an affair. And then when they were through, when they were not more interested, they didn't even return his calls. Right. You know, Let's anything, hear it for that. Anything wrong with that? <laughs> no. I don't, I, I'm not I, sure I, what he said. I, I don't say it's wrong in my book. No. no. You know, I mean, I think it was wonderful when it happened to you that one of these women chose you for a quick affair and you didn't have to worry about you had It's like getting to be prom queen, Otto. Terrific. You had more than your share of women choosing you, didn't you, Otto? I don't know. I mean, that is, you, you read this into my book. You told me this last night. I don't know if, uh, I, I don't speak about myself. That just depends on how you read the book. Otto, let me ask you, as an old friend. Yeah. You have a book and you have such an exciting life. And you've had your share of fights. Everybody knows that. You don't mention your big fight with Lee Cobb. You don't mention your fight I with Diane Cannon. I didn't have a big fight with Lee Cobb. Oh, you denied no, all Otto. your fights. No, let me we all <laughs> know you had a big <laughs> fight. <laughs> why don't you write a book about your big no, fight? Let me tell you why. Then, let, let me tell you what happened. It would be very dull to read it. He played a part in Exodus, and we had a scene with 20,000 extras. Oh. And he couldn't remember. There were 14 lines here to say, and he couldn't remember them. Oh, is that where he reads the telegram? So he got, no. So he got very, uh, very uh, mad at himself, really, you know. And I had to do the scene line by line. I had to cut after every line at the new angle. And so when it was finished, you know, I said, now, would you now try to do maybe all 14 lines together? And he said, I've done it. I won't do it again. I said, then go home. And I sent him home. I cut the last scene that she still had to do and sent him back to New York. Later on, he apologized, and we were very good friends when he died. We were not enemies. I would be afraid to work with you. No, I think you would not. Yes, I would. I, I'd love Diane. to work with you, but There's I bet I'd be a whipping boy. You'd scare the bejesus out of me. You're wrong. You would get used to me immediately. What about Diane Cannon? Now, you had a big fight but with her when you used her. I didn't have a big fight. Diane Cannon thought that you are a star if you come late to the set, or she would, for instance, rehearse and then disappear and have them remake their whole, her whole makeup while 120 people were waiting. Well, that is that wrong. Is, that is what I that don't is like. Wrong. That is not professional. 
and not right. I've worked with many professional actors. But that wasn't the argument, though. I, that was the, the argument. argument. Was you superimpose her face over a nude body, and she never. complained about the never. advertising. That is her idea. You it was know, her that idea. That was her body. She had never. But, but would I ever superimpose her face on anything? Would that's that be your department? department? What? That's what the charge never. was. No. Would that be your department? Her face and her body <laughs> no, are one. Really wouldn't. No, she's not Nina Fox says that she's you're a great best. director, but you do it your Who way. Who Nina Fox. And she says, you've got to do it Otto's way. He's great, but that's either you do it his way for. or you, there's no... That's what the director is for. The director who knows, knows what he yeah. wants, does it his way. But I must tell you, however, actor, which you can find in my book. Ideas? No. In my book, I say, if an actor has an idea how to play a part, and I can live with his idea, I can accept it, I always prefer to do it that way. Because if the actor has invented it, and created it, he's doing it much better. But if I see, whether it's Nina Fosch or whoever, that they are doing something wrong, after all, I must think of all parts. You know, you, you cannot, in a picture, in a part, play a single, then I must ask them. And I never have any, these two people that you mentioned, were the only one with whom I ever had a, a real fight. And all right. In the book. All right, yeah. we'll accept it, Otto. Write another book. <laughs> You never tell the truth about this, but, and I know How that I'd be you say that? Because I've heard about you. I'd From still home. like so everyone. I, everyone. What do you mean everyone? I, everyone in everyone Hollywood is... uh, agrees you're a great director, but, but you're difficult and you have whipping boys, and I know I'd be one of them. I'd still like to work with you. You are wrong on two And counts. I'm not a, a Not everyone in, in Hollywood. Not everyone in Hollywood agrees that I'm a great director. That is well, number one. You're mm. certainly one of the greats. Well, you did some great Thank things, you. Otto, among say. which is that you proved that all black shows in the days when they were not known, uh, Porgy and Bess, and before that, Carmen Jones, could be successful on the screen. Yeah. This was a tremendous breakthrough. Also, I must credit you for putting the name of Dalton Trumbull on the screen credit when he was blacklisted by everybody else. Yeah, he wrote I've, Exodus, and you I've, gave him credit. See, he went to prison for eight months and paid his dues to, to society. You know, he was convicted, and, and then when he came out, now if somebody steals or murders and goes to prison, when he comes out, he's a free citizen who can do exactly. whatever his job is. In Hollywood, this secret blacklist, which was the meanest mm -hmm. thing about it, was that these people could supposedly not work. Then they were hired secretly, you know. At one point, Dalton Trumbo and Wilson, you know, was also a first-rate screenwriter, had to write a script together for $1,500, a whole script, and those were people who used to make $5,000 a week before the blacklist. And I said, when the script was finished, I went to the people of United Artists and said, I'm going to give him credit. I have no reason, he wrote a very good script, and I'm going to put it on the screen. And they said, we cannot support you, but we cannot also not stop you because you have autonomy in your contract. Nobody's going to fight with you, Otto. If you say it goes, it goes. No, no, people fight with me. Anyway. Look, she fights with me all the time. It's, so, uh, why are you so mad? It, well, that was <laughs> a very bad time, and it was time to, to, to release those people from that long black list. Thank you. If even Lucy could be mentioned in that horrendous period, <laughs> that was one of the funniest yeah, it was incidents. Terrible. Sad, not funny, but, but a sad. But you were also mentioned? Yes, they, you, they uh, needed, uh, our, our show was number one, and they needed to draw attention to a gentleman who was, uh, a supposed gentleman, who was trying to get his name in the paper for Congress or something. I don't know, it's a mental block right what now. What's his name? I don't know. I really don't. But they had him with the blue shirt. Remember, they had to have a blue shirt for television. They had him locked uh -huh. in a room at the Biltmore Hotel. They knew that I was absolutely free and clear. They had nothing on me, but they used it with big red letters. And uh, then maybe he cleared me within 24 hours. Maybe which because you had red man. hair. No, 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 no. Even that isn't uh, for real. But uh, anyway, they did it. And it is a, a terrifying thing. And yeah, it was a terrible thing. Oh. You mentioned your age a few moments ago, of your own accord. Have you changed, Liz? You were always known as one of the free spirits of Hollywood. You yourself said you grew up trying to break all the laws and live your life the way you wanted to. Most normal kids, yeah. Not at 37, have you changed? You, are you more well, of a conformist so. today than you were? Am I more what? Of a conformist today than you were at one time? I don't know. No, probably, probably much less so because I don't have to. I think people that do what any of us do for a living lead privileged lives. Now, maybe it's hand-to-mouth, but it's still high rent, hand-to-mouth. I think it's a privilege to do what any of us 
do for a living. You mean because we should like it? We're yeah. doing what we like to do? Uh, not, I think that's a, a very important part of it, but I think also that we... we uh, what do you mean by privileged? Well, she's I talking, think that we... People getting on the, on the train in the morning. Those are people who spend We make more money, we have more freedom, we have more personal freedom. 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 We have more personal freedom and more control yeah. over our own lives. And we get we're really we're very control. mobile and we have in incredible access next to the average person. And I think that uh, I've enjoyed my life. I think I grew up to be, I think it turned out pretty much the way I wanted it to. I think I grew up to be who I wanted to grow up to be. Now, maybe that means I made That's myself wonderful. up. But then again, don't That's we all? Great. So I have an awfully good time. I have more, a great deal more personal freedom in my life than most people do. I appreciate it. I what about your it. philosophy one time? I like to break all the rules. Well, I can't help that. That's a compulsion. Uh -huh. I mean, that's like people that are... Uh, but you don't. No, just as many as I can get away with. <laughs> oh, you don't believe you do. Uh, almost everyone I can get away with. I'm terrible. You'd even be as in a jail if you did. Well, I've been in jail. Oh, <laughs> well, overnight for what? Twice in Mississippi and in Chicago. Well, why, you why, must have really why, why tried. Why it, I was a young protester or yeah, protester. Yeah, big deal. Big you want deal. To look at it. That can happen to any of us. You have right. to pick up something better than that. <laughs> I uh. What you want to do? I mean, I don't have any argument with my really life. I like my I life. She, yeah, you're damn right. She should. And I, uh, I, I have a better time she the older I get. I'm happier. Complex. I'm more at peace the older I get. I like myself more. I hope so. So consequently, I like other people more. Uh, I'm more trusting. I just, uh, I like it. It gets better. The older I get, the better it gets. My life didn't begin to be any fun until I was about 30, and then it started to be good. And what don't you like about yourself, or didn't you like about yourself? I've known that about you without really knowing you. I've known it for years. I think I, I was, uh, oh, I was one of those people that grew up feeling like a failure. I felt incompetent. Why? I could never achieve. I could, what? because I was always a failure. I he's could never a, pass in school. Talking here, he's writing a play. You're damn right he is. <laughs> I, mean, I, couldn't, Funny people I failed everything here. in school. I didn't grow up to be the way my mother wanted me to. My peer group, I couldn't get approval from. I couldn't get approval All from right, that's something they didn't like. What didn't you like about All of yourself? those things, because I was, I always felt I was who people thought I was. There was no real me. I didn't have a sense of myself. You were trying to live up to an image. I was trying to please yourself. everybody else other than myself. Do you still believe, as you once said, you do not believe in monogamy, that you love often and frequently and you're not a one person? Well, I think I probably lover. said that. God knows I've said anything and I'll <laughs> I mean, I think that I, when I said that I was probably, I would bet you in my very early 30s or late 20s and in a big sex, sexual frenzy. You know, you spend years of your life in a sexual frenzy. I didn't. <laughs> oh, I did. I've been married all my right. life. Do you believe, Cup, <laughs> uh, uh, do you believe in monogamy? I practice it. But do you believe in it? I practice you keep it. Doing it, you get it right that's there. a very evasive <laughs> answer. Not really. Look, look he blushes. No. I hope, I hope many that's people have color television on. The reflection of his yeah. tie. But now you've settled down, more or less. Well, yes. You're happily I mean, married. Yes. Yes, and I'm on the You're road most of the time, and I'm working, <sighs> and I don't have the time. And also, I mean, I spent some time on the streets having an absolutely wonderful time behaving like a tart and a slattern for years. And I guess oh, maybe I got it out of my you system. Did not. I did so. Oh, you did not. Oh, yes, I You're did. You're making it was that great. up. No, I, I'm I not. I can only say I wish I had met you then. Well, Otto, <laughs> that's, that's all I your say. bad luck. <laughs> what? That's your bad you luck. You did not. You Thank were carrying you. a protest sign. No, but then and after you were that, pretending. no, after that, I turned into a tart. You did not. Oh, I did. I had a wonderful time. But maybe that's why I don't have to be one anymore. <laughs> I don't know. It's all too complicated now, one for second. me. Let's let's get that pinned down. Well, you he's got really it written already. It's going to be a play. Were you really a tart? Well, all my friends said that I acted like. No, me. answer his no, question. No, the word is wrong. She picked was, from time to time up a strange man. Very loosely, and I enjoyed it immensely, and it was wonderful for me. You and lie. mainly what it did was tire me out. Oh, Elizabeth. You're shocking Lucille. Oh, I'm not shocking Lucille. Lucille. I want you to tell the truth. I that's am. Not, no, no, that's your pretend life. You don't you, want to think you, about you never me that went way. That I do far. think oh, about I you. Did. you did I'm yes, really did. sorry I didn't meet you then. <laughs> you can't take that away from me. I you did. can't take that away from <laughs> David, me. have you got all these notes down for your next play? I don't play? believe her. Lucy I don't believe her. So I think that she dreams it and, you know, she pretends about it. Oh, good. Well, you write my mother and tell her that. 
Will you Gladly. write her and tell her that you don't believe that about well, me, that I dreamed your, it all? that's what your mother <laughs> believes, all right. That, that I believe, but uh, I think the most but, you ever uh, did was carry a protest card. But in regard to what Lucille says, Elizabeth, you yourself have said that sometimes you make up things on the spur of the moment. They may not be true, but you say whatever comes to your mind, and yeah. it may or may not be true. At the, mo at the moment, you feel it. But I don't ever lie about facts. Yeah. I but uh, opinions, I mean, I, I, have, I have very contradictory opinions on one thing. I mean, what I think one day is not at all what I think the next day. I will start the secret to my book with this scene. Very with good. Her. Okay. And include some of those fights where, in your uh, where life, Where are you going to go if she's Lucille, not would you ever write, Lucille, would you ever write a book about your you. life? Lucille is, Pardon me. Is, 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 <coughs> is, she is decent <coughs> in person. I'm what? Uh, I don't. I asked Lucille a question. If she, like you, would ever write a book about her life, personification of a censor of telling other people what to do and what not to do, what to say and what not to say. No, why I don't just, you believe her? I've been watching her for years. That's why. But from the wrong angle. Perhaps, but I think it's from the she right angle. She feels very motherly toward it. Yes, I'm she sorry, does. I she do. Does. And I just don't. Let me go it. back to my question. Would you ever consider writing a book? As well, Otto has just so many people in your field uh, have written. Perhaps Otto hasn't had three or four uh, un unauthorized books written about him. You've had quite uh, a few. Has he? You. Yeah. I have. I and uh, uh, the most they did was to give uh, what, what I call a two, the first two pages were, um, what you call it, uh, come ons, what you call it? Um, come on. Teasers. 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 And uh, the rest of it was just copied from uh, lousy movie magazines or good movie magazines or good reviews or bad reviews or... Uh, you Go know. through the newspaper clips. Yeah, that. and that, that's all the books have ever been, so that you can't pin them down. And the first two pages uh, of most of the books, with one exception, um, had really a couple of rotten things they said in there. And you eagerly read the book trying to find out what really happened, and they never mention it again. <gasps> so, um, no, I have no uh, desire to write a book. Uh, yeah, actually, you can't tell the truth till you're about 85, and I don't want to live that long. Lucille, you have been pictured by Otto tonight, by others, as a very strong-willed person. Does that cause any generation gap with the two lovely children you have reared? One is Lucy, who's in the show business world, and the other is Desi, who's in the show business world. Strong-willed, because Otto says so, the strongest will man She creates a gap in the same generation. No. We're the same generation, and we uh, thought there's a big gap. Strong-willed. I'm not that strong-willed. I'm very easily swayed, and I'm conned by my children, and it takes me a very long time to take offense. Uh, things can boil inside me literally over a year, and uh, I have a reputation for having a very short temper, quick temper, <coughs> short fuse, today, but, but they it. don't know that it's been boiling for a year and a half, mm -hmm. and uh, some little thing triggered, and I said, well, they said, what the hell did I do? And they don't know that it's something they did a year and a half, so I really don't fit that description. Strong-willed, uh, I think that comes from longevity uh, in the business and doing, thank God I learned my craft, but I can only do my show. I don't feel I could do anything like these other people are doing. What I about rearing do children in today's world, though? Now, you know your children have a different philosophy and different outlook, I presume, without knowing them uh, that intimately. I really you have. don't know them that intimately either. I mean, how many <laughs> of us do? Uh, one, That's beautiful. The boy shows one, uh, uh, you know, uh, attitude, and the girl is, is much more outgoing. And uh, they don't seem to think that I'm square. They seem to tell me a lot of things. And some of them I give a little, uh, mm, really double take, and but I keep quiet for a while and think it over. I'm a little shocked now and then uh, at their friends and whatnot. But uh, thank God, since they've gotten older, uh, we've gotten very close. I see a lot more of them since they moved away and had their own homes. And, so I feel pretty good about it. I forgot what the hell you asked Well, me. let me mention just briefly that her daughter Lucy is in a new picture called Billy Jack Goes to Washington. <clears throat> and her son uh, Desi will be here making a wedding very shortly with Bob Altman. So and Carol Burnett with Carol Burnett and yes. a wonderful yeah. cast. Lillian well, your Gish. kids are pretty well set in their careers right now. Yes, they are, and I'm glad there that you. I took them out of school and put them on my show. So I wanted to keep an eye on them at a certain time, see which way they wanted to go, because I wasn't sure they wanted any part of showbiz, and they did. So mm -hmm. I feel uh, gratified, and I'm very proud of them. Thank David you. is a uh, very outstanding and a very, very bright young writer, as we mentioned earlier. And there was a story in the paper the other day, David, about a young man, uh, not a new, uh, young man, an old man who was an inventor. Oh, yeah. And he invented a yeah. water engine 
and now he's running into all kind of trouble with the government, even right. though it will save millions and millions of gallons of gas. And you have written a show that's almost identical, Water Engine, which right. is coming up. Right. Now, this is quite a coincidence. Well, it's not really. The, 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 the plot of my play is a man invents an engine which runs on distilled water, and he's tracked down by these nameless uh, big big financial interest and yeah. eventually disappears and it's an old it's a very old story I mean, it was made a, a movie with Alec Guinness called mm -hmm. the man in the white suit yeah and uh, you say it's here as the thing that Essie gave me it's here in the paper again and it's a very old story it goes back to a an American myth that I think we all believe that there was a that most of the news never reaches the papers most of the things which affect our life never really get into yeah. the newspapers one thing that got in the newspapers is a quote that you made. May I read it just to make sure we get it accurate, Dave? I want, uh, okay, Dave, I'm scared, Cup. You said, you were talking about uh, your philosophy, you were rambling in an interview. Yeah. And these are your words. Right. Uh, almost everything that we've been taught is wrong. Right. Like we owe allegiance to the state. Like religion is supposed to be important. Yeah. Like one must work for a living. Yeah. And people should be married. Yeah. Almost all the social tenets which we accept as gospel are basically wrong. Yeah. Now, is that an accurate quote? Do you believe all those things are wrong? Well, yes. If I, you do, I wish I both believe it. all those things and wonder when in the world I'm going to learn to shut up. <laughs> oh, I'm so well, not on this show, so please. You say yeah. that. <laughs> what did he say? He said he keeps wondering when he's going to shut up, which is oh. something I wonder quite a lot about myself. I understand. No. Would you sure. expound on that and why you believe religion, why allegiance to the state is wrong, why, why marriage is wrong, the things that we accept in our life? I don't... Well, I, because they're constrictive, and they're boring, and they're um, they're not productive. They're not happy. They're, they're ways of, of of standing between ourselves and our and our human impulses. Most of which are are are, are good. Well, religion, in the proper sense, should be productive. It should be fulfilling. It should be spiritual. Yeah. Why, why is that constrained? He just says that what people tell him, but he doesn't believe it. <laughs> and no, he must have the right to that, like allegiance. Sure, you, if you have the allegiance to the state, it's fine, but to tell somebody you must have allegiance is impossible, because if you don't have it, you don't have it. Well, well, we've taken a couple hundred years to prove that a lot of things have worked out, and there were thousands of years before that that things worked out, and uh, what he said last was more important. <laughs> he's wondering when he's going to shut up. <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with a lot of marriages? There are a lot of beautiful, thousands of wonderful marriages. There are thousands of people yes. who love having an allegiance to their right. country. Right, absolutely. Right. But why do you? But you that don't have to have it. That's well, what he that's said. not what he said. No, that's not all. He Isn't said. that um, what you said? No, um, he said these tenants are wrong. We're he said they are wrong. Them. Yeah. Wrong for you? No. No. I, wrong for everybody. I'm talking, I'm talking not on a day-to-day -day level, I'm talking on a level of philosophy, of those a priori things which govern the quality of our lives. And I'm saying if we took most of them away, we'd find that we'd get along with each other a lot better, I think. I think in our culture, uh, institutions yourself, have be become lonesome. replacements for uh, values, standards, morality, that sort of thing. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a shift in priorities, perhaps. I feel that quite a lot, that the institution of marriage, the institution of government, the institution, all those kinds of institutions became, the, we stopped focusing on the morality, the values, the standards, the practices involved and inherent in those things, where the thing itself became the be-all and end-all. And I think anything without some sense of value, meaning, morality, mm -hmm. or something underneath it can become a very dangerous and damaging thing because it's then habitual, not a conviction. That's why I dislike the things that were, uh, the, the written word that's coming out now, and then the, uh, the movies, the books, the movies, the television, the plays, uh, starting in that order, the written word. Uh, they're undermining all these things, and, and I think it leaves our young people with a sense of hopelessness, and he certainly is one of our young people. A hopelessness, uh, may, uh, may uh, without ask, meaning. Why should I do this? Uh, that uh, failed. No, my no. mother's uh, life may failed. My son. No, may not something. yet. As soon as she's finished. This <laughs> failed. That but failed. Have have uh, everything has failed. You know. Oh, Lu are you are you accusing me of being hopeless, Lucy? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, but I think quite the contrary. And, yeah. and if he someone is, your age no, advocates that they are not, no, 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 they're no. hopeless. Cop, may I say something? Let, let David yeah. answer. No, let me first. No, because no, we'll bow to seniority. When you listen here, you know to Lucy and to him, then he certainly presents much more 
of a positive attitude. He has not said one critical word about any of us or about anything was said here. While she doesn't like anything that anybody says. No, but it's just her way of expressing affection. No, and for instance, no. the one thing I want to ask you, yeah. how do you think we could get better along without the government? How, can, how could 200 million people live if there were not some rules, some laws, some government? Well, I, I was playing poker yesterday in this poker game. And uh, it was one of the reasons I love being in Chicago. And mm -hmm. we play a lot of different games. And the, game, the number of games, a lot of them are just idiotic, that we play necessitated the writing out of little cards so that people would remember what game they're playing. And we'd write down the name of the card and throw it in the middle of the table. Right? And so at the end of the game, we'd know what game it was. Right? And so we have a file of 15 different cards. But then the game started proliferating much past the, the, those cards. And so what we started doing was putting little matchbooks on top of each card in a certain way so that it would alter the name of the game written on the card and putting little chips on top of the matchbooks. And so you could never, the, until the, the whole idea of the card was gainsaid by the proliferation of useless information on top of it. You had no idea what the friggin' game was anymore. And that's the American government. It starts off as a good idea for keeping, just like capitalism, starts off with a good idea for keeping score of things, but it proliferates and becomes to the extent where it's no longer useful. But what would happen without the government? Them Ruskies would come in and, and, to, and take our cars from out our garages, as Allen Ginsberg says. I don't know what would happen without the government, but... Uh, I, I really don't understand. I think, well, what I think For is... For once I'm on your side, if, look I don't at, even understand it. Look, at, if, we take, if we start with the idea that people basically want to get along with each other and basically want to understand each other, then in an anarchistic sense, whenever they have to make a bargain with each other, they will. And that bargain and the rules of that bargain will function for the amount of but time. Society is but society is much more complicated. I disagree. People. I disagree. Yeah? Greed. What are you going to do with greed? The root of evil is greed. Perhaps fear is at the bottom of greed. Yeah. I don't know. Fear That's is probably underneath that. Of. But. Uh, well, we'll look at the government. But, Everybody I mean, in the world can keep their hand out of the But governments jar, come and go. I think the thing that makes us the best game in town, maybe the last game in town, yeah. the only game in town, perhaps, is a little, little article called the Bill of Rights, right? And. Somewhere in the, in the Constitution is stated the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Well, I feel that that's what I would fight for, that's what I believe in, and I think that can work, rather than a government by a hidden, controlling economic class that I feel and sense and believe is based in greed. And that's what I don't believe but in. They're but yes, they're there. Yes, they're there. You know, I, 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 I thought about the other day that the, gov that the huge banks have taken and stockpiled information in underground vaults, so that in the event of a nuclear holocaust, after the holocaust, we'll remember who owns what. Isn't that marvelous? It's frightening. It sure is. The people are going to bl literally, bl the people who will blow our world apart are going to st want to start, start again afterward. But who owns? Yeah, but before they do all but that, why can't we, uh, you know, uncomplicate our lives a little bit and believe in what we have and go back? Uh, that's why he says, I'm not agreeing with anything and I am. Uh, thinking of the individual uh, rather than the entire world, the entire government. I agree with him about the government. I must confess that the whole conversation has gone over my head. Oh, I well, don't understand 95% of it. But you do believe we should have a government. Yeah. That you make clear. And I like that. A form I of government. I think also that our government, so far, with all the weaknesses which right. every human thing has, is the best government In the that I can think words of. The moment. This is the way I feel. In the memorable words in, of Winston I Churchill. I would work to improve it if possible. <laughs> but I will not uh, say that, that, mm -hmm. that I would like to live in any other country no. than here. I was going to say the memorable Winston words Churchill of Winston Churchill was yeah. that uh, democracy may not be a good form of government. It just happens to be the best yeah. that man knows. Right. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to ask you what Winston Churchill had oh, to say. Oh, that's what Winston Churchill said. And Abraham Lincoln said, of the people, by the people, and for the people, not the Constitution. Good. Just to make sure, Liz, you... Good. <laughs> but didn't it get into the Constitution no. in any way? No. Really? It's, it should be. It certainly, it certainly should. It certainly emphasizes what we stand for. I always thought that was for. the point. It was, but it was not in there. <laughs> David, we want to wish you good luck on your new show and also the continued success of American Buffalo. Thanks. I didn't want to leave the impression that I, uh, we started out this conversation a long right. time ago about the foul mouth words of Clyde no, Barnes. No, that's, you, you, but, you cast me as the iconoclast cop. Anything I can do to serve you is my great pleasure. <laughs> I just wanted you to explain why it's necessary and Otto did it for you. And that's a very good explanation. You were talking about how people talk and that's the way they converse.
We have to say goodbye now, unfortunately, to this very lively group. The hour has gone so fast, it's hardly understandable. First, a very lovely Lucille Ball, who earlier this evening was honored by the Notre Dame Club of Chicago with his Excellence in Entertainment Award. Otto Preminger, who needs no introduction. he got a new picture coming up, The Life of I'm Moshe working with you. Yeah, No, it is really, the it's based on his autobiography, yeah. but it'll be really the story of Israel, the first 25 mm. years, it'll be called. Seen through the eye of Moshe Dayan. In a way, yes. Yeah. Focus through it. <laughs> and his autobiography is just... Partly my two eyes. <laughs> and his autobiography is just out called Preminger. And this is the ever-lovely Elizabeth Ashley, one of the stars of uh, Vanities, currently playing at the Drury Lane Theater at Water Tower Place. And Chicago's David Mamet, one of the great young playwrights of the day. American Buffalo is his, playing on Broadway. Has a new show coming called The Water Engine, opening May 11th. Irv Cupson saying goodbye, and see you shortly on Cup Show.